Hi everybody, I'm Cristina Vrinciano from the University of Nottingham and today I'm gonna speak on behalf of a wider team. Uh, so on behalf of geospatial.org, uh, which is uh, for those of you which are um, already acquainted with us, it's a chapter of OSGEO and we promote a lot of FOSS uh, technologies in Romania and uh, we've been around uh, quite for a long time. And uh, our team of volunteers that have helped us to actually use Phosphor-G to track the COVID evolution in Romania. So we've been more than um, geospatial.org for, uh, for this presentation. Um, just to give you a quick uh, timeline on what the pandemic in Romania meant. We had our first case on the 26th of February, 2020. Um, and since all the, uh, the pandemic was escalating uh, across Europe, we realized basically that this is going to escalate in Romania as well. So we started to gather, uh, to launch this, uh, this call for volunteers and gather together in discussions um, about doing an independent platform uh, for monitoring the situation in Romania. And uh, at the moment, we had a platform that was um, being put in place by the institutions, health institutions in Romania, but we wanted something that is uh, totally based on volunteering. We recognize there's a capability to, to map the situation, so we would definitely have a choice to, uh, to use our skills. Um, as a consequence, we, we were right, um, and the, uh, the epidemic was declared a pandemic on the 11th of March. And Romania acted quite quickly. Uh, on the 17th of March, uh, the state uh, authorities have declared an emergency situation and the power was being transferred from the government directly to a military group called the Group of Strategic Communication uh, that was responsible for all the, um, the procedures during the pandemic. Um, and um, on the 19th of March, we had a turn uh, in the way that the authorities in Romania decided to uh, publish the data. So what happened between the 26th of February and the 19th of March, we had access to data um, about the Romanian cases, including details about their um, location, uh, the, the location where they were diagnosed, uh, the location where they were being treated, uh, information about the gender, the age group, and so on. Um, from the 19th of March, uh, this information was not available anymore. The authorities sent this um, document to all the local uh, public authorities, telling them that they have to stop reporting that, and um, uh, they will only issue reports about the number of cases at national level without additional details. So we had uh, this um, moment marking uh, our effort because it became really, really difficult to actually gather the data and map, map it correctly. Um, we only got the details back on the 2nd of April. So the authorities decided to go back at county level reporting, not with all the details, so not very um, full of information as we wanted, but still we got like um, the same, um, the same uh, level of um, spatial detail as before. From the 15th of May, we see the state of alert. Uh, Romania downgraded its emergency status. Um, so right now we are in the process where uh, the authorities are monitoring co uh, continuously the evolution of the epidemic in Romania, but also um, they're revising the way they were reporting uh, during the pandemic. So we get uh, additional data from new cases and uh, data that comes uh, from the previous cases uh, that had to be revised because of um, miscommunication, basically. Uh, the whole effort is, as I said, is voluntary and I have to stress this. Um, we are a team of 32 people. Some of us you may know already because um, they, they have been quite active in the um, uh, OSGO and uh, Phosphor-G community. Um, some of us are new, some of us just responded to our call for new volunteers uh, for this specific COVID-19 uh, project. 
and we come across uh, from across a lot of uh, backgrounds so some of us are more technical um, some of us have different skills uh, we have uh, medical uh, skills as well so basically we have uh, different backgrounds that complement each other and uh, make this effort actually possible um, as I said, this is collective. We are a community volunteering. We we accept um, calls from every, uh, we have this call open and we accept uh, proposals from anybody that is really interested to co uh, to contribute. Um, and our main effort has been uh, centered across um, sorting unfiltered data. So um, as I said, we uh, we started the epidemic with um with this re reporting style from the authorities where they were letting us um know more details about the cases um whereas at some point they just stopped and uh we didn't get uh, much more details so our own uh, effort was to go at the beginning of the epidemic for all the cases and try to put them at their own location we had some problems regarding the, the way that they were reported. So, for example, we we were getting cases from a, a certain county, but the um, where the case was treated, but actually the case originated in another place, uh, where um, where was the right way to actually map it. So we had to deal with that at the beginning of pandemic. Then we had to deal a, a lot with the fact that we didn't have detailed data anymore. So we had to basically go through all the sources, data sources, which uh, in, at this point uh, meant the official reports, local authorities reports, um, some uh, press reports. We had a tool put our, at our disposition by um, our friends from the journalist house, Casa Journalistului in Romanian. And we had to filter all this data and sort it out and make it um, easy to ingest in a, a mapping application. We are doing a daily collection of data. There is a missing data um, word in there. I don't know why, but um, yeah, we're doing daily collection of data. So we're, uh, our effort is being done daily by volunteers in their spare time uh, and we're basically uh, daily looking at all these data sources and try to collect the data and sort it as much as possible. We're looking also at multiple data sources. So um, apart from the reported cases, which include uh, basically the um, diagnosed cases, the um, uh, recovered cases, deaths, and uh, tests. We're also looking at that other um, data sources that uh, can give us more information about um, this whole picture, and also um, things that are correlated uh, to to the whole epidemic situation and the whole um, idea of the um, of the transfer, uh, uh, respiratory disease. So um, we have. It, as you're going to see in the in the demo, we have multiple sources related, for example, um, to um, vulnerable um, communities, to points of interest, um, also um, air quality, mobility data, and so on. All the data that we're using is open data, so we're not using proprietary data. Everything is being released by the um, um, their, um, by certain institutions as open data. So we're relying on that. And we put it in a variety of useful products. So in the platform, um, in the demo, I'm gonna show you how this is, uh, this data sources and uh, this open data is being, are being used um, in a variety of useful products, whether it's uh, maps, where we map um, the situation and also um, correlations between um, different uh, data sets um, or um, in different graphs that uh, show the progression of the epidemic. Um, there is a constant update and improvement. So we're constantly looking to update our platform and uh, try to improve what we already have in there. Um, uh, so if we come up with new products, with new ideas, with new correlation ideas, and so on. 
uh, we're uh, relying a lot on open source technologies. This is important because uh, we stress that we, we are using um, Phosphor-G and all the platform is built on open source technologies. And our most important thing is also the data, uh, data access and sharing. So all the data and all our effort is being um, shared um, as open data as well. So we have some APIs put in place, some CSV files that you can download, and there are many, many other um, opportunities to, to access this data um, and to use it uh, at, your, uh, at your own uh, mapping project. So there are some uh, projects that are using right now our data and it's very successful for them as well. And um, we, we are liking to see that uh, the community um, has adopted our data and is using it wisely. So our platform, of, uh, as I said, uses a lot of data sources. Um, the first and the main one is the official data published by the Strategic Communications Group. As, well, as I said, there are daily reports on the cases, the tests, the deceased uh, people, um, and the one that have recovered, so the healed person. Um, we are uh, basically complementing that with press releases from other relevant authorities at local level. So we're scouring also um, all the, uh, the pages of uh, ministries, health institutes at local level, mayorships, county level authorities, um, hospitals as well, to look for complementary details for all the cases, tests, deceased and healed. We are also um, looking for the press articles, mentioning uh, details about the cases. Uh, um, we are um, doing some maps that are related to the health infrastructure of the, um, we're using data from the Romanian Health Ministry and the Romanian Health Observatory, which is an independent um, um, endeavor. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, we are also trying to come with uh, different other correlated um, information. So we basically map the marginalized communities, the vulnerable communities to see how they have um, access to, um, to health infrastructure, where are the hospitals and how far uh, these vulnerable communities are from them. Uh, we're using data from the World Bank for that uh, and from the health ministry. Uh, we're not only monitoring the situation in Romania, but just to give a, a wider context, we are looking at the European um, uh, side as well, and we're looking at what happens beyond our borders. Um, also, we're offering migration data. So one of the key points about the epidemic in Romania uh, was about migration patterns. Uh, what happened is that we we have a, a great um, a great number of the population living outside the borders of Romania, and the moment that the situation uh, escalated within Europe, uh, we had the, um, this moment where everybody wanted to come back home. So we we were trying to see if uh, the, this comeback back uh, back into the motherland uh, has any impact over the transmission of the of the virus within uh, Romania. As I said, we're also looking at mobility data. We're uh, parsing daily reports from um, Apple, Google, and Waze. So whatever they are um, passing as uh, mobility information, we are also transforming that into graphs and maps. And uh, we are also looking at the air quality products um, that could help us understand if there is any correlation between um, being a respiratory disease, um, how that does that affect um, the transmission. Uh, five um, minutes, Christina. All right, all right, I'll be very quick. So as open source technologies, we're using um, backend uh, Node.js, Postgres, and PostGIS. Um, and for the front end, we use a wealth of other technologies uh, such as R, Shiny, uh, some Python as well. Depending on each of our volunteers' is skills and how we actually decided to, to put together um, all the graphs and the maps in the platform. We're also basing some of our maps on other technologies so um, for, to collect the data because it was easier for everybody. Not everybody in the community is familiar with um, geospatial uh, databases. So we use Google Spreadsheet to actually collect uh, much of the cases. 
And for the map, some of the maps, we used Google Earth Engine as well. We get a great deal of support from the Sage Group uh, for um, hosting us on um, Amazon Web Services. And we um, actually applied for a grant from Carto, and we're very thankful for that. Um, uh, so we can keep some of our maps um, mapped on the, uh, on the Carto. Our data access is done through APIs and CSV files. Uh, I put here some of the links, but they're also available in the platform. We got some visibility as well. So we all our um, neighbor got into the press um, and we uh, got on some major plat news platforms in Romania as well on Twitter. So we, uh, if you want to find us um, and uh, uh, you can go on Twitter, there are some tweets about that. But in Romania, our main um, achievement was to get to a large, um, a large side of the population and keep them updated on what's happening. So just a quick demo because this was supposed to be a demo uh, over the how the platform looks like. So I already have it. We have this platform. This is the um, uh, the main dashboard that we created where we can see the confirmed cases um, basically mapped on county level um, and we have all this information about the total confirmed cases. We actually have a, uh, an English version as well. So the total confirmed cases um, and the total number. So right now we're at 22,000 uh, cases in Romania. Um, we were leading county in Suceava, northern Romania. That was like a very big situation there. We also have the total number of recovered people um, here and the total number of deceased people and the evolution of the cases per day. Um, the platform, the English side of the platform is still in development, so I'm sorry if some of the names are in Romanian. And we also have the same part of the dashboard being reflected within our maps, uh, also with a um, disclaimer uh, telling um, that the um, the health reporting has been changed by the authorities. So that's why some of the, our cases, for example, are mapped within um, the space of the Black Sea, which is unusual, but is because when we had that uh, gap in reporting, um, we didn't know where to put them. So uh, as we progress on finding the details, we put them back into the counties, but for now they are placed in this unknown um, space. As I said, we also have information about the deceased, so to see where the most people have uh, passed. And also the metropolitan areas, which are not loading. Oh yeah, there they are. Um, where, because right now uh, we are allowed to circulate within Romania without a declaration. So during the, uh, the state of emergency, you had to have a declaration so you can um, tell the authorities what you're doing and why you are out of the lockdown. Um, now uh, within this metropolitan green areas you can travel without this declaration and um, it's uh, it's much easier um, as i said apart from this initial dashboard we have a range of maps um, basically using carto we try to to map uh, some of the health infrastructure in romania uh, and also the access of the population to this health infrastructure um, to, to see where the population is located and where's the nearest uh, COVID support. Um, also the same thing for vulnerable populations. So we can definitely see that the majority of the vulnerable population does not have access to uh, very good access to COVID support. Um, we're looking at the European context and also, we, so we mapped all the all the European countries and their evolution, and also um, the green corridors, so we can see how we can travel from one another. Uh, some uh, particular points of community interest. So during the lockdown, we are only allowed to go to pharmacies, supermarkets, banks, veterinarian. Um, uh, cabinets. So um, we, we had to actually uh, map those to, to give the population some information about uh, where they are located. So we used uh, OpenStreetMap to, to get the points of interest. 
Also, we have a very interesting map about the border situation. So daily influxes uh, of um, people coming back into the country and people getting out of the country. It's very interesting to see that the majority of the people uh, coming are from the Western side of Europe, whereas the, the migration goes towards the Eastern side of Europe. Uh, some NO2 concentrations um, mapped with using Sentinel-5P data from tropospheric um, uh, column, um, also how it evolved during the time um, of the pandemic, and also a comparison between uh, 2019 and 2020 uh, during the lockdown period. This should also, um, yeah, this is also, um, loading and some mobility maps that are still in uh, development. So we're going to map uh, the statistics that are offered by Google, Waze and Apple, um, also on, uh, on some uh, more cartographic ways. We have a, a lot of statistics in the form of graphs. So basically um, uh, cases per day. Um, and we also mapped some of the important uh, times of the pandemic into this. Uh, the daily evolution um, against uh, tests as well. Um, also the new confirmed cases against um, the, the previous day. Uh, the distribution of uh, the cases per age group. Per, um, also the reproduction uh, index R. This is done by one of our colleagues, um, Dragos. Um, he is responsible for this graph, so he's calculating this, and we can see that we had a down, um, and now it's slightly increasing again. And the evolution of this confirmed case is per county, which is not loading yet. Um, we have a number of graphs also for uh, the passing, so the deceased. Um, we have distributed them over uh, age, county, uh, day, um, uh, also um, gender. So um, we we are uh, doing all these graphs, thinking about what would somebody that works into the health um, infrastructure uh, domain uh, would need to actually analyze the the situation. A very interesting graph that we have, and I think I'm gonna just like quickly go over it. Um, it's about the relationships between the cases. At the beginning, we had all these details where we can map to how the, the virus was spread between cases. Um, and we created this nice relationship graph that you, uh, where you can see where the initial uh, cases originated and how they, they've been transmitted. And this uh, can also be filtered very nicely over age groups, over uh, genders, and over uh, counties as well. A distribution over the counties, so we can definitely see which ones have like the, uh, the biggest number of, um, of cases. Java and Bucharest, obviously, because uh, was where the concentration was. The total number of tests per day and the test, the mobility um, graphs that are showing a little bit funny here, I don't know why, um, basically telling us um, on how, which uh, mobility patterns we can, uh, we can view. Also the air quality we're monitoring from Sentinel-5P but also from uh, institute stations and we have the situations in Europe uh, as well. So you can see there's a wealth of information that we can um, we can map and uh, put on a graph. We have daily uh, updates about what we have done into, into the platform. And during the time where the data was not reported correctly, we actually issued a manifest letter of request on behalf of our organization. And it was supported by 13 other organizations, uh, civic ones. Uh, to release the data openly for the information of the population. And this was a cornerstone uh, for our um, effort as well. We have we need to wrap up there. Uh, yeah, need to wrap up I'm just quickly. thinking. Great. <laughs> so we ha just have a community section. And if you want to read more about the platform, we have an about where everything is really toughly, roughly documented. So that's it. <laughs> Sorry for the long presentation. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thanks.
Christine, I, I have a, a confession to make, which is that I didn't press the record button for the first five minutes or so. so <laughs> we, I can do it again. <laughs> we may ask you to do that bit again. So that, that's, uh, that's, that's entirely my fault. Um, but I'm going to move straight on to a few questions that have come in. Uh, Ahmed says, uh, we had a similar situation in Algeria where the government decided to ag aggregate country uh, data on a country level. And he says, to bypass that, we use crowdsourced data from Wikipedia. What do you think of Wikipedia as a crowdsourcing platform to collect that data? Um, we haven't thought of that, to be honest. Uh, we, what we did was uh, rather a manual job. So we tried to actually look across uh, different platforms, especially the press, because the local press here doesn't really care about GDPR or whatever. So <laughs> we, we found a lot of the details in the local press. Um, some of the authorities have ignored the, the request from the um, from above and basically they just went into releasing some more details about the cases so we we didn't exactly use a crowdsourcing uh, we just uh, crowdsourced the, the details ourselves okay great thanks and a question from Bilal um, he says um, were you able to produce a space spatio temporal map that shows how the pandemic spread over space and time uh, right now, our maps are rather static, um, and uh, what does show a certain uh, timeline um, is the graphs that you, where you can see the, um, the progressing over each day. But that is a very, very good idea. Um, we are constantly improving the platform. So if at a certain point we feel like we, we might do one of these maps and somebody wants to do it, it's an entirely community um, effort. So if somebody wants to pick up on that, yes, we're very open to it. We had a certain point where we wanted to use Carto's timeline feature to actually uh, map that. So it's, it's definitely an open option. Okay. Uh, the next one was from Neil, who says that the map of vulnerable populations, uh, it just wanted to clarify which vulnerabilities that included. So age, medical conditions, I think you mentioned a couple of them. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really clarify about that. Um, so the, the data comes from the Atlas of Rural, uh, Marginalized um, and uh, Human Development um, locations and villages in Romania. So basically it, it is mostly a poverty map. So it does show um, that the, the poorer um, population is located in certain parts of Romania and um, the location between uh, where the health infrastructure is being, uh, is being placed and where the actual need to, to access that uh, is. So basically, we're just looking at the poor, uh, poor population of Romania. Thanks very much. And um, finally, there's a question about the applications and technologies that we use for the dashboard. I think you, you ran through them, but perhaps if you could just give us a quick reminder. Um, yeah. So we, we're using Node.js uh, for the back end and uh, Post, uh, PostgreSQL uh, and PostGIS um, for, for the database. And um, the front end is done with many, many, um, many technologies. That's because each of our volunteers have a, has a different background. So basically, um, since we crowdsource all these graphs and all these maps, everybody has came come with an input and um, depending, some are more proficient in JavaScript, some are more proficient in Python. So we're not limiting ourselves and we're trying to aggregate together over this uh, platform. 